excuse my word, an idiot to finance it. There was always somebody in the world who thought this was a good project and could find money for it. That time is over. So from a government perspective, we have to put a lot more effort in our PPP to uh, do the post-2015 agenda. Our role is to best practice and standards, and that's the road to success. Why? I think um, India would be uh, an exception in your long um, uh, tradition in PPP and a lot of experience you have. But the most countries are work, um, uh, a lot of PPP projects fail. And one of the reasons we saw is there is a lot, uh, probably also here available, a lot of case studies. Roads, which is my specialty, um, uh, I have about a database of 900 case studies, which, when I looked in it, 20% never became on a pre-feasibility study. And some of these case studies are still marketed as very successful projects. So if you don't look deeper in it, you'll be fooled. The rest of my case studies, 30% never came to a financial close. Still on a drawer, are people thinking and dreaming about a good project. And the bad story is, especially for the taxpayers and for the government, is that 30% of my uh, 900 case studies, the project went bankrupt. It's not operational anymore. I have examples in Greece, examples in Poland. I won't mention more countries, but I can show them on the map where they are. Bad arranged projects, bad behavior of the government, bad behavior of the private sector, you name it, it's there. And of those 900 case studies I have, there are only 20% still operational and still successful. And we have a lot uh, to do. If I look, for example, in my work in PPP in health, um, there's a lot of confusion. What is PPP in health? Um, health um, is very um, down to a country, how it's organized, how you get the money for the, for the health sector. And I, I had a discussion uh, yesterday and somebody said to me, well, healthcare is free in India. And I always say, that's, that's the biggest lie. Nothing is free in this world. You have to pay for it. But sometimes you don't have to pay directly for it. But service provided to the public is never for free. That's not so free as a free right. And the only PPPs I see which are successful um, are hospitals. And in both cases, very successful and very bad. Um, and these are just a few pictures of existing PPP projects. And all of these projects are still promoted as being successful on the website. But um, I don't have to tell you how it looks. I hope there's no one here around. Uh, but um, there are a few projects I visited. Um, there are rooms and they are not operational, although still promoted as being operational. At the highway robbery, I liked very much um, uh, the phrase. What we are trying to do is um, make it distinguish what is successful and what is not successful. And we are a small hub in Geneva, and we ask countries or regions to take up a specific item of PPP and look for the best practice. From those best practices, we, um, we have the regional training center, um, we provide materials, and we try to develop standards in working. Our output is um, the best practice guide in each standard, in each uh, aspect of PPP. And from those best practice guides, together with our, our colleagues from uh, the World Bank, ADB, we try to uh, become standards. If you are a developed PPP country, you probably don't need standards anymore. If you are very successful, um, you have your own standards. But if you are starting or facing a lot of problems, um, these standards and these guides could help you to at least prevent mistakes um, at the beginning. We hope that the outcome of these best practice guides and these standards at least will help governments to speed up the time to come to a successful PPP project. What is, um, and there were some examples in, in this morning session, what is killing for the private sector is a long way to get to your project. It's investing money which you probably never can recuperate in your project. So all the elements to come to a successful project should be in those standards. 
discussing about land acquisition, the regulatory framework, the legal framework. Um, to, uh, this morning was mentioned arbitrage. Very important to have a transparent and open arbitrage. All those items should to be arranged before you even think about PPP. And our role is specific. Uh, well, my colleague from IFC is here. They are here to finance projects. The UN PPP initiative, us, we don't do projects. We help the governments to get in contact with the private sector to make a framework to start your first successful PPP projects um, as soon as possible and then hand it over to the World Bank to finance or ADB and we do that together. We are not an investing organization, we just try to reduce the speed of your first or your second or your third project. A few um, um, uh, things uh, out of experience. Um, when I came to this conference, I saw that the other organization, uh, IPC and IPE, were together and they had a, um, a list of recommendations I have to with them. I just took out three. Um, what is very important is a common uh, definition and typology of PPP. And it is so obvious, but so often forgotten. I work now partly for the foreign affairs. Foreign affairs PPP is something completely different in West Europe. That is helping out countries with AIDS programs, a, um, uh, malaria programs, where the government is sponsoring, subsidizing uh, private identities to help out. For my background, it's project finding. It doesn't care which type of project it is. If it's a bank of a project, it's PPP. And those and those kinds of misunderstanding, a misunderstanding between the private sector, who sometimes thinks this is good money, the public sector, where the public sector thinks the private sector takes all the risk. If you don't understand each other, forget the P about partnership. More consistent, a general promotion of PPP in a new uh, economic culture um, um, and the benefits. It's always very funny. If PPP was so good, you don't have to promote it. So there's something wrong about PPP that you have to promote it. Um, what is uh, so challenging about PPP uh, and why you could do with international standards and good practice is the next picture. Um, PPP is enormously complex and I try to do it in a picture. You have a problem, you want drinking water, you want a road. As a government, it's your task to enhance public infrastructure. And you want from one water tap to a big water treatment facility to really improve your infrastructure. Uh, the, the first thing you, uh, you are faced is uh, corruption. If one sector is very sensitive to corruption, it's infrastructure. And I can say that out of my heart because the Dutch PPP unit was a result of one of the biggest frauds in the Netherlands in the, in the construction area. Um, and uh, look, there are examples enough. Um, the, one of the big sponsors of PPP in Russia was the former uh, mayor of, of, of Moscow, uh, Mr. Lobov, who built more than, than years before. His wife um, was very luckily uh, the director of one of the biggest construction companies in Russia. So infrastructure is open to corruption. My uncle got filthy rich by going bankrupt every five years in the construction because he had a wonderful business model that he could make profit out of it. So as a government, you have to be very sensitive about this, um, uh, this item. It's non-negotiable. Um, secondly, you as a government are there to do a public service. It's not only building a road, but it is very handy and very convenient is the road is used by the user, of course. So you want transfer from the one water tap or the bad road to a good road in a PPP. And what are you doing? You make a complete, very difficult mode with a special purpose vehicle, with banks who loan, with a contract that owes for over 10 years. And if you are very unlucky, your project when it comes to a financial close. It even got a price. My last project in the Netherlands, a 4 billion euro uh, road, got a project by 
um, a bank association. Um, Firstly, I'm glad, but secondly, I think, well, we paid too much because if you get a prize from a bank for a PPP project, it's a bit dubious. So as a government, you are struggling with enhancing your, your infrastructure, involving the private sector, which, of course, runs on profit, and someday you have to find um, your, your public service. And there are two outcomes which I give in the end. Or it goes completely wrong, and this is a real picture of a road in the US, where you miss each other, you try to build a bridge, or you choose for the picture above that PPP is the bridge uh, to work together. But it's not easy and it is not going um, uh, on itself. So especially uh, from a government, learn uh, from your success and learn from mistakes from, uh, uh, from others. Make that overview and really go to projects. Look, why are projects so successful or why do projects fail? Try to learn from them and make those recommendations into standard documents. Help both the private sector and the government to help to work together with those standards because there is still a gap to, to do. So what we do, uh, we have a health center in Manila, we have one center in Russia, we are now building one in Azerbaijan. They will look in the development of their own country and make a comparison on PPP in the world. They make a best practice guide of um, referential projects which will help them to implement their own um, projects. And we use that information also provide PPP knowledge for the post-2015 agenda. And secondly, sometimes we hand over to our colleagues at the World Bank to help on in, in uh, rearranging the first uh, project. And we do a lot of training on the government side. And um, when I started in the Netherlands with PPP, I said, actually, PPP is horrible for the government. And why? Because it has a few elements which, from a nature, a government is not used to. You have to be very transparent if one organization in the world, and I'm, and I'm a civil servant for many years, is not very transparent, it's a government, of course. You have to be accountable. That's new to civil servants. You have to be accountable for what you're doing. You have to show your numbers and your figures. You have to show your, your budget. You have to show what you're doing. And I'll give you an example. Um, the, the previous speaker talked about value for money. Um, we have uh, we, we copied, of course, the UK work to get the value for money. And actually, I was publishing with each PPP project the value for money for the government. So we thought we had to pay A for it, and we only paid B for it. That gave us value for money. And in the beginning, there was a lot of riots, uh, a lot of, uh, not a riot, but a lot of opposition within the government to publish those numbers, because that was... Um, secret information, that was company information, but it, it actually it helped to get understand that we as a government got value for money, the private sector was still happy about the return of, of profit they got, and we both uh, came to an agreement that it was beneficial for all. But being it so transparent was, was new. These are the most, most sectors we work in as the International Center of Excellence. Of course, roads, wastewater, health, energy, you name it. Uh, oil and gas is still empty, but the others um, we are working on. Uh, we have the, on a national level, we have, as I told you, the specialist and training center. Uh, I, I told you about the health center in Manila. We have to get from the best practice to the standards an editorial board. We have about uh, 3,000 members in our team of specialists who are PPP experts all over the world. Um, so, uh, last but not least, we have our business advisory board. This is a group of people from um, the private sector, mostly on the level of CEOs. You have to think about companies like Vinci in, in France, uh, the Patterson Law Firm in the US, um, the APG, the, the, the second largest pension fund in the world, who do a lot of PPP projects, and they advise governments from the basic of the best practice, which type of PPP could be very beneficial for the country, what has to be arranged, 
actually what I said before, to make a project as clean and as, uh, as perfect as possible to hand over to the private sector. Then because you both don't lose too much time and money. And we have a task force, it is a task force that's consistent of people from consultants from the private sector, which is available for countries if they want to do PPP projects. Uh, the overview of the, 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 the special center which are uh, operational now, we started uh, a year and a half ago, so we're just um, on the beginning. We have one in the Philippines, Russia, Japan, Aruba, which is a small island, and a, um, we're now in the final negotiations with Azerbaijan. There are a few on the roads, um, talking about roads, Qatar, the Dutch on uh, water management or Delta technology, they're still thinking about it. Schools in Germany, and my colleague is at the moment in Morocco to finalize a special center on um, renewables, um, especially for Africa, and one other country is uh, Korea. If you look at my brochure, there are also some talks with India on roads, but they haven't um, progressed at this moment. Um, what could be the role of, of India? I, I was very impressed with the, um, uh, with the, the book which was presented today, but also the, the predecessor. You have a lot of experience in PPP. You have a lot of projects. And I think um, having done projects, and that's also my experience, that is the road to success. There will be good projects, there will be better projects, and there will be excellent projects. PPP doesn't change it. Also, normal procurement, one minute, I will finish. Um, uh, also, normal projects.